18 times minus 2 thirds squared is still 4 ninths, which is still 8. And 8 times minus 2 thirds, that doesn't work either. All right. So in this case, we can say that, uh, yeah, 4 ninths, all right. Yeah. yeah. So we have that one solution for this. All right. Factor out the GC. Ah, oh, wait a minute. By now you're figuring out what's wrong. And here's the problem right there. If I factor out an X, that's not X squared anymore. I blew it. All right. On live television. Now you know. All right. Everybody see what happened here? I used my good friend the GCF, but if I factor out 2x from 18x squared, it's not 9x squared anymore. It's just 9x. And that's just minus 4. So that means that this whole amount of work here is totally wrong. All right. And that what it should be is 2x parentheses 9x minus 4 zero. In which case I set this equal to zero, 9x minus 4 equals zero, because that's a factor. This we know already equals zero, x equals zero. And now I see 9x equals 4, x equals 4 ninths as a possible second answer. Well, let's test it and see here. All right. So 4 ninths, if I go 18 times 4 ninths squared, that's 16 over 81, should equal 8 times 4 ninths. Uh, 18 goes in there, yeah, I'm hoping it's going to go in there like, um, So in this case, my friend the GCF, uh, he should have been a little louder in telling me this wasn't correct. But it's an interesting sidetrack, you know. And I should have known something was wrong because you're never going to get three correct answers on a quadratic equation. All right? That should have been a warning sign, and it was. It set off some warning bells, and I went back to the book and saw my mistake. So, yeah, you can get two possible answers. You can get one answer, all right? And, uh, but you're not going to get three. So, a good teaching moment there, all right? All right, let's look at something like this, all right? And again, this is recognition. Perfect square, perfect square, difference of perfect squares. 2x minus 5, 2x plus 5, and they equal 0. So we set them equal to 0, 2x minus 5 equals 0, 2x equals 5, x equals 5 halves, 2x plus 5 equals 0, 2x equals minus 5, x equals minus 5 halves. And if we go up here, we would see 4 times 5 halves squared, 25 over 4, minus 25 should equal 0. Oh, 4 over 4 cancels out. 25 minus 25 equals 0. That works out. Minus 5, well the same thing is going to happen. I'm going to square the minus 5 halves and end up with plus 25 over 4 again. So this works as well. All right. Always make sure to check your work. That little extra time it takes. Hopefully you think it's worth it. All right, finally, practical application here, all right? Because now we can start thinking quadratically as far as area goes. Because area, when you deal with area, is square units. 
And so we can unsquare these units and try to figure out dimensions. A rectangular garden has an area of 51 square yards. The length is 14 yards more than the width. What are the length and the width? Well, the first thing you got to do is get a picture of this in your mind. Because this is coming at a problem a little different than we've done in 6th and 7th grade. So, as always, draw a picture. It's a rectangular garden. Alright, so I draw a rectangular garden. And it has an area of 51 square yards. So now the area equals 51 square yards. Not length or width, area. And it says the length is 14 yards more than the width. Well, if I let the width be W, then the length is 14 more than whatever W is. So the length is W plus 14. Alright. You with me so far? Now we've got this. Alright. So the area is going to be length times width. In this case, the area is W times W plus 14. And they tell us the area is 51. And if I distribute the W, I get W times W, W squared, plus 14W. And here I've got a quadratic equation staring at me in the face. So I'm going to move everything over and make it equal to 0. 0 equals W squared plus 14W minus 51. Everybody see what I did? Descending order equal to 0. And it doesn't matter whether 0 is on this side or 0 is on the other side. But I want to keep my squared term positive. All right? Now I want to think, all right, parentheses w, parentheses w, multiplies together to make minus 51 and adds together to make plus 14. Well, about the only thing I can think of that goes into 51 is 5 plus 1 is 6, so that uh, 3 goes in there. And 3 happens to go in there exactly 17 times. And 17 and 3, I can combine to make a 14. So if I go plus 17 and I go minus 3, then 17 times minus 3 gives me the minus 51. Plus 17w minus 3w gives me 14w. And I've got two things now that multiply together to make 0. Huh. Okay, so I set each one equal to 0. Uh, w plus 17 equals 0. W equals negative 17. W minus 3 equals 0. W equals 3. Well, minus 17 might work here, all right? But a width W of minus 17, in reality, that's not going to work. And so we say that minus 17 being negative and applied to a unit of measurement, we say is extraneous, not a solution. However, 3 may work, all right? Let's see, all right? So if I put in 3 here for W, all right? Basically, then I've got 3 plus 14 is 3, so that's 17 times 3. Length times width gives me an area of 51 square yards. So the width is 3 and the length is 17 yards, all right? All right, so again, we took the area, which we knew. We took length times width, which gave us a quadratic. Put everything over on the side, factored it, set the factors equal to zero, test our answers, and find that a negative answer in this case is extraneous. I mean, yeah, if it's minus, Three, then W plus 14 is minus 3, and that's minus 3. And what would that be? Minus 3 here, uh, no, minus 17 times minus, is, you get an area of minus 51 yards. Yeah, no, not good. That'd be a big hole in your backyard. All right. So, that's our first step towards solving quadratic equations using our old friend the GCF and factoring and then setting those factors equal to zero. So give this a try. We've jumped over to lesson 98 now, don't forget. This is A to G. 
and four to six as your last assignment in math for this week. All right, enjoy.